A beautiful day to everyone. Welcome to another insightful learning and rewarding experience. At the end, you're expected to predict the qualitative characteristics such as orientation, height, magnification of images formed by plane mirror, curved mirrors, and lenses. Please be ready with your Science 10 Module 3 entitled Qualitative Characteristics of Images. In Module 1 and 2, you've learned the different electromagnetic waves their frequencies and wavelengths, and also practical applications in our daily lives. Just in case you find it hard to memorize them, remember this. Army, box, G. R stands for radio waves, M for microwaves, I for infrared, V for visible light, U for ultraviolet rays, X for X-ray, G for gamma rays. They know in that sequence they are arranged in increasing frequencies but decreasing wavelength. Hope it would help you somehow. Among the different EM waves, which one can we see? It is visible light. The human eye and brain work together to convert visible light energy into an electrical impulse that can be interpreted as an image allowing us to perceive what we need to see to survive. Every day, light waves reflect in objects into your eyes, which allows you to see the object. To intensify your knowledge about light, please take a look of your module on pages 4 to 5. The title is What's In? and answer the short article about light. Let's check and learn something about our behavior of light. Light is a natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things possible. It is a type of energy known as an electromagnetic radiation. It is given out by luminous objects such as the sun, light bulbs, and laser. It is made of little pockets of energy called photons. Light travels as waves, but unlike sun waves, it does not need any material to carry its energy along. This means that light travels through a vacuum, a completely airless space. Light waves travel out from their source in a straight line called rays. Light behaves in a variety of ways with, when it comes in a contact with water, air, and other matters. When light strikes matter, a part of light is absorbed into the matter and is transformed into thermal energy. If the matter that the light strikes is a transparent material, the light component that was not absorbed within the material is transmitted through and exits to the outer side of the material. If the surface of the material is smooth, just like a mirror, reflection occurs. But if the surface is irregular, having a pits and protrusion, the light scatters. Did you get it right? Good job, students. Keep going. Everyone, let us proceed with pages 7 to 13. The title of it is What's In? There are two types of reflection. The first one is specular or irregular reflection. It is defined as light reflected from the smooth surface at a definite angle. Please refer to figure 4.8 and figure 5.8. The second reflection is diffused or irregular reflection. It is produced by rough surfaces that tend to reflect light in all directions. Please refer to figure 4.B and figure 5.B. The laws of reflection state that, number one, the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal line to the reflecting surface all lie in the same plane. And number two, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Please refer to figure number two. Regular happens also in a plane mirror. When you're in front of a mirror, what can you see? The image is the same size as the object, which is yourself. Same orientation as the object. Your head is on top. When your feet is on the ground, it will never be inverted. The distance of the image is the same distance from the mirror and it is always virtual. Please refer to figure 3. In plane mirror, left-right reversal happens. Please refer to figure 6. If you view an image of yourself in a plane mirror, perhaps a bathroom mirror, 
you will quickly notice that there is an apparent left-right reversal of the image. That is, if you raise your left hand, you will notice that the image raises that would seem to be its right hand. If you raise your right hand, the image raises what would seem to be its left hand. In play mirror also, laterally inversion happens. Please refer to figure 7. The letters in front of the ambulance are written laterally. This is because when seen in the rear view mirror by another vehicle, the image of the word would get inverted, letting the driver read the word properly so that he can provide way to the ambulance. Regular reflection happens also in a curved or a spherical mirror. There are two kinds of curved mirror. The first one is concave mirror. It reflects light inward to one focal point. It is used to focus light. It is also known as converging mirror because it has reflecting surface that is recessed inward. Please refer to figure 9. One example of it is dentist mirror. The second type of curved mirror is convex mirror. It reflects light outwards. Therefore, they are not used to focus light and also known as diverging mirror, in which the reflected surface bulges towards the light source. Please refer to figure number 10. The side mirror of the car or vehicle is one good example of it. So can you get a stainless steel spoon and hold it? Which one is considered as convex mirror? Which side is considered as concave mirror? The outer side of the spoon is an example of convex mirror, while the inner side of the spoon is an example of concave mirror. I know you are amazed about the image form in that stainless spoon that you're holding. So let's continue with the type of image form which is called virtual and real image. You can you refer to page 15 of your module? What's more? So let's have the assessment number three. Let's answer the questions one to four. Let's check your answers. For number one, as you look at the concave surface of the spoon, your image is inverted and real. For number two, if you bring the spoon on arm length distance away from you, using the surface of the spoon, it appears real image. For number three, as you look your face on the convex surface of the spoon, your image is erect or upright and virtual. Lastly, for number four, if you bring the spoon an arm length distance away from you, using the convex surface of the mirror, it appears as virtual. So did you get it right? Perfect. So for further explanation about real and virtual, please refer to figure 11 and table and page 10 of your module. A real image is formed when light rays actually meet after reflection. And it can be formed on the screen and inverted with respect to the object. On the other hand, virtual image is formed when light rays do not actually intersect after reflection, but they appear to diverge from the mirror. So a virtual image cannot be formed on the screen and erect or upright with respect to the object. So if light can be reflected, it can be also refracted. So one example of it is refraction and lenses. So please refer to the page 13 of your module. Take a look at the table. So the difference between convex and concave lens. Convex lens refers to the lens which merges the light rays at a particular point that travels through it. Light rays converge. It curves outward, thicker at the center as compared to its edges. The focal point is positive and the image is real, inverted, virtual, erect or upright, and enlarged or bigger. The object appears closer and larger. It is also used to correct hyperopia. On the other hand, concave lens can be identified as the lens which disperses the light rays around that hits the lenses. Light rays diverge. It curves inward and thinner at the center as compared to its edges. It has negative focal length. It produces erect or diminished or smaller image. The object appears smaller and farther. It is used to correct myopia. 
So in describing the image formed by the plane and curved mirror qualitatively, ray diagramming is very helpful and essential. So it traces the path that light takes in order to for, for a person to view and a point on the image of the object. On the diagram, rays are drawn to the incident ray and the reflected ray. Complex objects, such as people, are often represented by stick figures or arrows. So there are four principal rays in constructing ray diagram for the curved mirror. The first one is called the PF ray. A ray of light parallel to the principal axis is reflected passing through the principal focus. The second one is called FP ray. A ray of light passing through the principal focus is reflected parallel to the principal axis. The third one is CC ray. A ray of light passing through the center of curvature is reflected back along its own path. Lastly, it's called the V ray. A ray of light directed to the vertex reflects at equal angle from the principal axis. So you can just use two rays in making ray diagram. So it can be FP ray and CC ray or FP ray and PF ray. So according to your preference. So in describing the type of image form, the term virtual and real will be used. In describing the orientation of image, the term upright and erect and inverted will be used. To describe the size of the image, the term magnified or bigger, same size, smaller or reduced will be used. To determine the location of the image, these are the following terms to be used. Behind the mirror, in the different parts of the curved mirror such as center of curvature, at the focal point or principal focus between C and F, at vertex, between the vertex and the focal point, and finally, beyond the center of curvature. So you can refer figure 12 on page 11 of your module. Did you get important terminologies and details? Alright. Now, we're ready for the description of image using ray diagram. So please look at the table on page 11 of your module and figure 8. Let's describe the image form in a plane mirror. The location is behind the mirror, its orientation is upright or erect. Its size is the same as the object. And lastly, the type of image is virtual. So next, we proceed with a curved mirror. So let's have first the concave mirror. Please refer to table on page 12 of your module. So let's have number one. If the object is beyond the center of curvature, the image location is between C and F. The orientation is inverted, the size is reduced or smaller, and the type of image is real. For letter B, when the object is at the center of curvature, the location of the image is at the center of curvature. The image is inverted, same size, and real image is formed. If the object is at the focus, there will be no image form. So I will add another locational object which cannot be found in your module. The object is between C and F. So can you use the P, F ray and V ray? So let's check your answer. So the image location is beyond the center of curvature. The orientation is inverted, the size becomes bigger, and it's real image. Did you get it right? So let's try another one. The object is between B and F. So this time, you're going to use the PF ray and the P ray. So what did you notice? So the reflected ray will not meet, but if you're going to extend a line, from the reflected rays, it will meet behind the mirror. So let's describe the image. The image location is behind the mirror, it is upright or erect, becomes bigger, and it is virtual. Did you enjoy it? So now, let's proceed with a convex mirror. So please refer to table on page 12 of your module. So anywhere you put the object in front of a convex mirror, the image location is always behind the mirror, it is always upright, smaller than the object, and always virtual. 
to sum it up. So in a plain mirror, the image location is behind the mirror, always upright or erect, same size as, as the object, always virtual. In concave mirror, the image description de depends on object's location. So as the object moves toward the concave mirror, the size becomes larger. Oftentimes, the image is real, but if the object is between F and V, it is virtual. When the object is at the principal focus, there will be no image form. So in convex mirror, anywhere you put the object, the image is always behind the mirror, upright or erect, smaller and virtual. So if you really understood the topic, so let's have a short evaluation. So can you get your post-assessment in Science 10, Module 3? Use the answer sheet provided. So this is a bonus for you, my dear students. So let's have the first one. Refer to number 3 in your post-assessment. A clock hung on a wall is facing a plain mirror hung on the opposite wall. As you see the reflection of the clock on the mirror, the clock shows the time of 9 o'clock. What is the real time? The answer is 3 o'clock. Good job. So let's have the second one. Please refer to number 5 in your post assessment. If you wish to have a magnified image of your face for applying makeup or shaving, the mirror you will use is blank mirror. The answer is concave mirror. You are doing great. So for the third question, please refer to number 13. So where must a candle flame be placed to produce an image that is upright and magnified? Let's check your answer. So it should be placed inside the focus. Did you get the correct answer? Very good. For the last number, please refer to performance tasks. Numbers 21 to 24. Can you look at the given figure? Describe the location, orientation, size, and type of image form. The answer to the following. Location is beyond the center of curvature. Orientation is inverted. The size is bigger or magnified. And the type of image is real. So a big thumbs up, my dear students.